All right, hello everyone, Salt here. Welcome to the video. Today we are going to be going over the brand new weapon that came out, the secondary, the Onos. So in this weapon series, I take a weapon, I build it out, and I test that weapon on its own merits, meaning I don't mix it with any kind of external factors like Warframes doing damage, uh, pets putting statuses on the weapons, pets doing damage, anything like that. I just test the weapon by itself built out and, and that way we can get a good uh, view of what the weapon is like. And I leave it up to the viewer to make their own intelligent conclusions on things like, hey, salt put viral on the weapon, <clears throat> but I'm going to be using nourish and so maybe I can switch my element up instead of viral. Things like that. I let the viewer make their own intelligent uh, conclusions. So let's get into the Onos here. So it's a secondary arm wrist like kind of like a wrist arm forearm gun ish but it has an incarnate mode that makes it an arm cannon uh similar to the shidu or the infested um bubonico so really cool you can't see it here in gameplay when i switch to the arm cannon i'll show you there um but pretty cool looking gun so uh, we'll go over the evolutions at the end. We'll do the regular build first. So um, the Onos has three different ways of doing damage, and I'll explain all of them. So the first one, there, there's two that are in the incarnate mode and one that's not incarnate. The non-incarnate is just a simple one. It shoots out like a little explosive ball that has a very small radius. It is technically an explosive, but it has a very small radius. Um, and that's about it. 20 shots in the magazine, shoots pretty slowly, um, and it only has puncture as a uh, element. So that does kind of suck. Um, the incarnate mode... So, again, incarnate weapons, when you get headshots, you fill that bar and you go into incarnate mode, just in case no one knew that. It's going to have uh, two different firing modes. So, go up to this one here. So, this mode right here, you're going to hold down, um, you know, the fire button. And it's going to kind of do like an energy siphon in front of you. It's going to start very wide, and then it's going to... Um, slowly draw everything to the center, and then when it reaches the very end of its energy siphon, it's going to do the other part of the incarnate, which is kind of like a big giant sniper shot, um, or cannon shot, I don't know, however we want to look at it. So the siphon part of it actually does damage. It does. It's a close range ability, it kind of siphons energy from the front of uh, the weapon, and it will do... Uh, damage that way like kind of like a flamethrower ish except it, it eventually gets like skinnier uh, and then eventually leading to the big shot here so those are the two incarnate forms of damage and then the non-incarnate form of dam damage the non-incarnate again only has puncture the siphon part of it only has radiation of course you're seeing other things because i actually put those on the weapon so the siphon part of it only has radiation and the incarnate form only has heat. So I do have heat on the weapon, but the incarnate, the, um, I should have said the sniper incarnate form. The sniper incarnate form um, only has heat. So that's important to know because it's going to affect our build. So, okay, let's go back up here. Let's go through the mods. So the first mod we're going to be using is Galvanized Diffusion for multi-shot. The second mod we're using is Galvanized Crosshairs for crit chance. And it has a little bit of a conditional where you can get some more crit chance. Um, altogether at full stacks, you're going to be at 320% crit chance with this. Now, all of the modes can trigger Galvanized Crosshairs, even the Energy Siphon mode. So even the Energy Siphon mode can trigger Galvanized Crosshairs. Or any kind of um, headshot, conditional, to a certain extent. It doesn't trigger one of the uh, evolution conditionals, unfortunately. And we'll get to that, though, when we get there. Prime Pistol Gambit for crit chance. Prime Target Cracker for crit damage. Now I'm going to go back over to the Prime Pistol Gambit here because there's another crit chance mod that a lot of people use. Critical Creeping Bullseye. So Creeping Bullseye is it's technically a little bit more um, crit chance than 
Prime Pistol Gambit, but it has that negative fire rate. Now, this weapon is already slow. On slow weapons, even a small decrease in fire rate really, really hurts. And also, to get to this um, Incarnan Sniper shot, where you're, you're first siphoning energy, fire rate affects that. So the slower your fire rate, the slower it is to get to that sniper shot. And you don't really want that. You want um, a quicker way to get to that sniper shot. Uh, even if you don't like the sniper shot, like I, I've seen some people only doing the energy siphon. I don't know why. But even if you wanted to just do energy siphon, um, negative fire rate is still going to hurt like your, your tick rate on that energy siphon. So negative fire rate is not very good. So that's why we would choose P Prime Pistol Gambit as our crit chance over Creeping Bullseye. Next here, we have Lethal Torrent. It's going to do two things. It's going to give us multi-shot. It's going to give us fire rate. Fire rate's going to make it feel a lot better to uh, try to get those sniper shots. It's, gonna, it's still going to be slow. You'll see it in the gameplay. It's still going to be quite slow, but it makes it feel a little bit better. And then um, in these next three, we have our elements. Remember, the game reads it from left to right. So it's going to read Frostbite and Pistol Pestilence first, and it's going to combine those two to make Viral. So this is going to be our 60-60 Cold, and our 60-60 Toxic. And we're going to make Viral here. And then in the last slot, we're going to be going with Primed Heated Charge for our Heat. So it's going to read it as Viral Heat. Now, if you don't have Primed Heated Charge, I would recommend using the 60-60 Heat mod. The 90 heat mod is a little bit too much of an in-between. It's obviously has no status, so you know the 60-60 is better in that case, and it only has 90 heat instead of 165. So it, it just kind of sucks in both ways. You, you go with either the 60-60 or you go with primed heated charge. I'm going to be going with primed heated charge just so I can have a higher um, heat weighting, and that's about it. But you can go with the 60-62 if you don't have primed heated charge. Um, okay, next, Ruinous Extension. I had to do a lot of testing on this weapon because the wiki is not um, completed right now. There's not a lot of information on it. And so I, I did testing about things like, hey, is this producing forced impact? Is it producing forced slashes? Um, does Ruinous Extension work? Does the other one, what is it, Terminal Velocity? I think it's called, or Lethal Momentum. Does Lethal Momentum work? Um, and I found that Ruinous Extension works on the... Uh, siphon, the incarnate siphon mode here. So it will increase the siphon mode out. Um, so you get more damage out of that because it's going to be hitting more enemies. And there is one specific evolution that this makes it like really good. You would 100% use Ruin Ruinous Extension. There's not really much else in the um, Exo slot that you really need to use anyway. This weapon doesn't really need too much. So Ruinous Extension is just an easy pick. Okay, next in the arcane slot we have cascadia flare now cascadia flare is amazing it's 480 percent flat damage the other two options that we frequently go with are secondary deadhead or secondary merciless secondary deadhead and secondary merciless are 360 percent flat damage so flare is obviously better but the problem with flare is that you need to produce heat procs and you need to produce heat procs at a somewhat quick rate um, otherwise, they'll fall off. And if we remember what I said before, the only thing on this weapon base, without the heat mod, of course, that produce heat procs is actually the sniper part of the Incarnan. And that's it's slow to get there because, well, you have to get headshots, then you have to charge the, the energy siphon mode, and then it finally shoots that sniper shot. You know, And then you're producing a heat proc, possibly, because it's not 100%. <laughs> and so... That's not a good enough um, reason to be using Flare. You would, you would have a very hard time keeping Flare stacks up, if you could even keep them up. And so to use Flare, you actually need to just add heat to the weapon. That way the Energy Siphon mode can also produce heat. The Regular mode can produce heat. Everything is producing heat if you put heat on the weapon. And so that's why we chose to go with Prime Heated Charge. Um, before I had Prime Heated Charge, I was testing this um, build with, it looked more like uh, this, with Hornet Strike right here. And obviously you couldn't have Flare then, because you wouldn't be able to keep up Heat Stacks. You would have to have Secondary Deadhead or Secondary Merciless. But that's 360 instead of 480. 
So you get an extra 120% flat damage with Flare. So if we look at Hornet Strike, by using Flare, you're only... If you take off Hornet Strike and then put the heated Heat Mod in, you're only losing out on 100% flat damage. But what you're gaining is a massive 165 Heat. Um, and Heat Procs, of course. And Heat Procs are amazing. Uh, so I think it is worth it. I don't think the Hornet Strike Viral is the best way to go. I think the Viral Heated Charge is the way to go. Or primed heated charge, or the sixty sixty, I should say. Don't use regular heated charge. So that is my reasoning there. I think that's pretty much everything. Did I put everything where it's supposed to be? Flares on there? Yes. Okay. So that is the mods. Let's get to the evolutions because the evolutions are pretty interesting too. So just to go over the evolutions here um, for people that don't know, because this is a brand new weapon. The first one is uh, just getting a hundred kills. The second challenge is going to be killing eight Eximuses. The third... I feel like I'm missing one. No, I'm not missing one. The, th uh, the third one is going to be getting five headshots on a book boss. I don't know what they're actually called. Like Scathing Whisper or something. It's those bosses in the Whispers that come out... Um, when you press the book. So you have to get he uh, five headshots on it, which is not that difficult. The weapon has a magazine of 20. You just spam a bunch of shots into the, the Scathing Whisper's head. So that's a pretty easy one. The fourth one was the bane of my existence for like 12 hours. And I, I actually wanted to put this video up like a few hours after the content came out, but this challenge right here was killing me. So this one is you have to do um, 20 disruption like towers, 20 disruption nodes, on the new Armadas, I think it's called, on the new map that just came out. <clears throat> so I did it on Steel Path first, wasn't working. I did it on non-Steel Path, wasn't working. I then did it with another group on Steel Path again, but this time I kept the, Oro the Onos out the entire time. I didn't use my primary, and it worked, but... The group wanted to leave at a certain point, and they failed the last two uh, towers. And so I was 18 out of 20. And so I was like, okay, well, at least I know I, it works. I have to keep the Onos out. Well, I joined another Steel Path map, and I did the exact same thing, and it didn't work anymore. And so um, finally someone in the clan was like, you should just do it solo. And so I did it solo, and it worked. And I didn't even have to have the Onos out. I killed the uh, you know the towers with my boar. So... I think doing it solo is the most consistent way. It's boring because you're have to, gonna have to be alone, but it's probably the most consistent way to do that challenge where you have to do 20 disruption towers. And then the last one is an easy one. You have to put um, three different Incarnan weapons on. Well, I guess it's an easy one if you have three Incarnan weapons, but the last one you have to put three Incarnan weapons on, so a primary, a secondary, the Onos, of course, and then a melee, and you just have to complete a mission. So it doesn't have to be a specific mission. So those are the challenges. Okay, let's go over the actual uh, evolutions. First one is just you've unlocked it. There's nothing there. Second one, we're going to have negative weapon recoil. The weapon doesn't really need neg negative weapon recoil, so I don't really care about that. Projectile speed. You don't have to have three. You can put it only and it work. Oh, really? The uh, For the last challenge? Interesting. Yeah, the last challenge said complete it with uh, one in every slot or something. Interesting. I just I put one in uh, in all the slots and it worked that way. But if it works by itself too, that's that's good for newer players that don't have uh, all of the uh, incarnates or or many incarnates at all. Awesome. That's good to know. So you don't have to have all three, as far as uh, Frost King saying in the chat there. Um, this one right here, projectile speed. This is this is okay. This is an okay option. Because it's going to make your like regular fire mode be able to hit headshots a little bit easier. But I don't think it's the best option. Uh, the best option is going to be fire rate. Because again, fire rate is going to quicken your energy siphon into your uh, sniper shot. So that's going to be a lot better. And also, you know, fire rate is going to help the primary mode too. Because you're going to be able to get quicker headshots because you're shooting quicker. So I think it's kind of a no-brainer, the fire rate. Third evolution. 
Increased magazine capacity only affects non-incarnate. On kill, 10% chance to replenish 10 ammo only affects non-incarnate, so we don't like those. And the middle one here, uh, plus 30 reload, reload speed, also only affects non-incarnate, uh, non but, but reload speed also translates into um, switching to incarnate quicker. So it's, it's not a great... Uh, these are all not good. These are all really not that great. But I feel like the middle one is the only one that really gives you any kind of benefit towards the incarnate mode. You get to switch to it a little bit quicker. Now we're going to go into the fourth evolution here. This is where things get a little bit interesting. There's there's some good options here. So the, the bad option, I feel, is Elemental Excess. This weapon is um, like a hybrid weapon. And usually with hybrid weapons, you, you're building status and crit chance. But you're usually leaning a little bit more into the crit chance. And you're losing crit chance with this evolution. You're, you're gaining plus 20 status and you're losing minus 10 crit. And I put this on and I actually check the stats because um, if you watch some of my other videos, like the Strun, for instance, the Strun has a evolution like this, but when you click it and it gives you status chance, it doesn't just give you like the 10% it tells you. It gives you like, you know, plus 300%. So the Strun, it, it's crazy. It's not like that on this weapon. <laughs> this weapon does not work like that. And so this is kind of a bad option, this elemental excess. So let's skip that here. And we'll go to these, these other two. These other two are both good. So, on kill, plus 2.5 punch through for 20 seconds. It's really good. Now, keep in mind, the energy siphon has an innate 5 punch through, so it already has punch through, and the charge shot has a 1 meter punch through, which eh, could be better. The charge shot could have a better punch through, um, but this also affects the primary mode. So your primary mode, while you are trying to charge it to get uh, incarnate, you're going to be able to punch through enemies and possibly hit multiple heads. Multiple heads equal quicker charges. So that's what I like. And it also affects all of it, right? It like increases the punch through of all three modes. Although two out of the three modes don't really, really need it, but it, it still affects all of them. Okay, second one here. Headshots build 50% more incarnate. This is another really good option. Um, this is just going to make your regular non-incarnate fill up quicker. Uh, I am personally going to go with the first one. And it's because this affects all three of the damage modes of the gun. And, I mean, even it affects your regular fire mode. And your regular fire mode, if it gets punched through, and it will have punched through, I mean, there's a 20-second buff, you can hit multiple heads per hit. And multiple heads per hit basically acts the same as, like, headshots build 50% more incarnate. Um, this is really tight, though. It's kind of like up to you, whatever you feel like you uh, you want to do. I'm gonna. I like this lethal lance, though. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be sticking with lethal lance. And then finally, the fifth evolution. Another few interesting options. All of these are actually quite interesting. So we'll start with the first one that I think is the weakest. We have sequential skullbuster. On consecutive headshots, you get plus thirty percent headshot damage, and it stacks up to four times. Um, this is not triggered by the energy siphon mode. I was trying to get, the energy siphon mode actually will trigger a lot of headshot conditionals. Like it'll stack your galvanized scope, things like that. But it doesn't actually um, work on this. Uh, at least as far as my testing, I could not get that energy siphon mode to actually work on this. So this is only going to work on the primary fire, not incarnate. And then the big like uh, sniper shot you get at the very end of the energy siphon. And it also falls off if you miss. So if you don't get a headshot, it falls off. And then it has to start back up on the second time you get a headshot. So if you get a headshot, this doesn't get affected. It's a second headshot that produces the first stack, and then it goes up from there. So it's a little bit inconsistent. It's almost... Honestly, this, this pick right here feels like it would be better if you weren't going to use the Incarn. And if you were just going to shoot the Oros in its primary fire, this might be pretty good because it's easier to get headshots that way. But I, it was kind of weird. I didn't really like this one. So we have the other two options here. We're going to go with the one I picked, and the one I picked is very boring. <laughs> it is on a punch-through hit, which is going to be all the time because we picked the uh, the fourth evolution, which is going to be that, uh, you know, you gain 2.5 punch-through for 20 seconds. So you're always going to have, have this up at full. So at full, it's going to be plus 10% damage for 10 seconds, stacking 10 times. 100% damage, it's flat damage, not very exciting. It's just 100%. But 
it works all the time. <laughs> There's no conditional for it. Um, it works on all three modes. That's really it. it. It's boring, but it works all the time. Let's look at this one here. Devastation Cascade. Hitting enemies in incarnate form increases the critical chance and critical damage of the fully charged blast by 5%. So on testing, your energy siphon is actually what's triggering this. So you go to ch you go to shoot the incarnate and you know first you have to do that energy siphon. So anything hit by that energy siphon is giving you those 5% stacks. And those are start those start like ticking up, ticking up, ticking up the more it hits enemies and then finally when you go to shoot the main blast um, you get the effect, the stacks fall off, and then the next time you shoot the Incarnate again, it basically repeats itself. In testing, like even in the Simulacrum, where I was able to kind of like group enemies, like all kind of together-ish, um, it was hard for me to get up to the full 250%. Most of my uh, shots I was doing was like, you know, 150-ish percent, but it's still pretty good. I mean, 150% crit chance and 150% crit damage. I mean, I'll take that all day. The problem is that it only affects that charge shot. It only affects the, the charge shot at the end. It doesn't actually affect the energy siphon. The energy siphon is just charging it up. This The actual damage you get is only from the charge shot. So these are both good options. But this is a boring one, but that 100% works on all of the modes. This is can be very good. And this is probably a better one if you're trying to go for like a one-shot build. I don't know if this can do like a, a one-shot Archon or something. If you're doing like a one-shot Archon build, this might be like the best option here. Um, but it's only going to be affecting that charge sniper mode. So I'm going to pick the boring 100% flat damage option, unfortunately. <laughs> so that's the evolutions. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a 10-minute um, Kuva Survival. Show the weapon weapon off, uh, kill some trash, kill some acolytes on steel path, of course, um, and then go from there. Um, because we don't mix this with any kind of external factors, I'm going to be doing this on an Anaros with no Archon shards. Um, no mods on the Anaros that increase weapon damage, no Arcanes that increase weapon damage. And a pet with no Sentinel weapon and no mods on the pet that increase weapon damage. That way we can just get a view of the uh, Onos by itself, and the viewers can make their own decision on... Uh, or their own conclusions on things like, you know, hey, I'm going to be using Nourish, so I'm going to switch that viral up to, like, Corrosive or something instead. So, all right, let's get into Tabby Uni. I'm going to... Cast my three now. They changed the Naros up a little bit. I'm going to cast my three, and it no longer doubles armor, so it's it's not as strong as it was. But you get to move around while it's doing it. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to cast that to increase my armor. That's all that ability does. It just increases my survivability by a bit. And we're going to start this off. You're going to fill it up here, switch to Incarnate. It's going to start in that Siphon mode, and then it's going to release that Blast. Now, the Siphon mode actually does um, significant damage. This weapon is, is very heavy with the Punch-Through. So with a Punch-Through weapon, you're going to want to be playing this at its... Uh, Full potential, which is kind of like in hallways or anywhere where you can line enemies up. Like on the staircase there might not be the best. I'll pull them a little bit away from that staircase. And the Siphon Mode, it can also be used kind of as a primer, too, because that Siphon Mode is going to be applying uh, Viral Stacks quicker than the actual um, uh, Sniper Shot, of course, because the Sniper Shot takes a long time to actually get to. If the uh, Siphon Mode ends up killing, like, your targets before you actually get to that uh, 
sniper shot, shot, make sure to not shoot the sniper shot because the sniper shot does take up a lot of the incarnate bar. So hold your fire if the uh, if your targets are you know have been killed by that siphon mode. So we have no problem maintaining our, our 480 of our flare uh, because we've put uh, heat on the weapon, which I think is the, the proper way to do it. Flare is very strong. As long as you can maintain those uh, heat stacks, flare is an amazing mod. It'll, it'll always beat out Deadhead and Merciless if you can maintain the heat stacks. Uh, this weapon can't maintain the heat stacks unless you put heat on the weapon. That way the uh, uh, siphon mode and the primary can produce heat stacks because otherwise only the sniper shot does. Oh, you know what? Next time I go in Incarnate, I'm actually going to kind of show off the Arm Cannon, too. Let me get some kills here, and then I'll uh, I'll fill it up, and I'll go in Incarnate, and I'll, I'll show off the Arm Cannon, what it looks like. Because it is pretty cool. There's not a lot of Arm Cannons in the game. I think there's only, uh, well, there's three now with the Incarnate mode of this. But before, there was only two. So let's fill this up here. So let me see if I can... So it's kind of like a large arm cannon that, that's like an incarnate form. Pretty cool looking. Uh, we have Malice spawning. He's the most dangerous acolyte. So we put a mag bubble on me. I'm going to roll and drop the mag bubble. And now it's safe to actually fight Malice. Wherever he is, there he is. There he's gone. <laughs> one, one charge shot killed him. Now, the actual energy siphon doesn't go very far. So you, you, you use, um, I think it was lethal momentum I put on, or, or the, the one that increases beam length. I think it's called lethal momentum. Um, you put that on and increases it by 8 meters. But, like, even with that, I think it only goes to, like, maybe, like, 12 to 15-ish meters. Like, it's not a very long-range um, beam. I'm going to hit a couple of these life sports. The sniper shot also has a little bit of a uh, uh, AOE radius too when it when it hits, does a little bit of like explosive damage. That's that's important to know too. It's not like the most gigantic of uh, AOEs, but it's still it's still a decent size. I don't think it's worth putting fulmination on it though, just because um, it happens infrequently. A lot of times you're you're shooting the energy siphon. You spend a lot more time in energy siphon. And shit, I would even probably say, like, the primary mode. Then you actually do shooting the uh, uh, sniper shots. So I don't think building for the sniper explosive radius is the best. And that's also why I don't pick that one um, evolution. It's very strong, and it looks very strong. But it only affects the sniper mode. That gives you, you know, 250, 250. 250 crit, 250 crit damage. It might be the go-to, though, for, like, one-shot builds. If you're trying to do, like, a one-shot boss-killing build, it's probably the go-to. But I think for regular content, you'd probably just go... It's boring, but you'd probably just go with that 100% uh, flat damage increase. Just because it affects everything. Try to get headshots. Um, don't be like me and, and not get headshots. 
Try to keep your scope stacks up. Everything can produce uh, scope stacks. Even the, the energy siphon can produce scope stacks on this build. You just have to aim head height. Um, I've just been a little bit lazy about it. <laughs> there we go. We're back up at, uh, we're not full stacks. We're four now out of five. I'm going to cast my three again to commute myself some more armor. They basically added, um, I think the augment was called Negation Swarm. They basically added Negation Swarm on his three. So your armor doesn't stay on you all the time, unfortunately. But you do get status immunity. We're almost at 10 minutes here. Oh, I got my weapon stolen. That is a siphon. There it is. All right, we have another another uh, acolyte coming. Oh, I shot him by accident, and he's almost dead. All right, two shots. I pray if I one shot him in the head, he probably would have died in one hit. I was shooting into that group randomly, and he was in the middle of it. So this is an extremely powerful Acolyte killer. Probably one of the strongest I've, I've actually ever uh, did in uh, as a ranged weapon. There's not a lot of ranged weapons that can completely one-shot the Acolyte. Without externals, of course. With externals, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. With externals, you could probably make the Stug one-shot the Acolyte. Nah, maybe that's a, that's a bit of a stretch, probably. <laughs> But with the weapon itself, there is not a lot of weapons that, that could one-shot the Acolyte like this. All right, let's hit this one life support. So you, you kind of want to be you want to be aiming in the distance for your sniper shot, but you want targets in front of you too because you want that uh, the siphon to actually do damage. So you're you're kind of looking to shoot in a line, but you want enemies far and and close. That's how you get the most out of this. I got staggered. That's how I know my uh, my armor went down now. Is because it should be giving me immunity. There we go. I can't. When I do these videos, I can't say anymore that I'm only going to cast that ability once because now I am going to have to recast it. But luckily, it doesn't affect gameplay. It just it just uh, gives me a little bit of armor. And they can move when I cast it too, which is pretty cool. I do like that. You don't have to sit in one place anymore. Oh, we're at 10 minutes. Okay, so 10 minutes, we're at 647 kills. That is well above average that we normally get. Average weapons when I do this, like, for instance, like the Kuva Hein, Kuva Carrick, those weapons will usually hit around, like, 400 kills in uh, in 10 minutes. So this is at, like, 650 almost, 649. That is really good, well above average, which we expected. I mean, it's an incarnate weapon. Um, where am I going? Where is the uh, Where is the green? Is the green thing this way? Yeah, there it is. All right, so we'll do a uh, Lua Conjunction next, a, ten, a quick 10-minute there. Lua Conjunction enemies are going to be a little bit higher. They're going to start at 180 to 200. Um, it's going to force me to fight Thraxes, which are kind of like Super Eximuses. And uh, they won't all be Grenier. They'll be mixed. Or did I just say that? No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> so I really like this, uh, this weapon here. It's a cool Incarnate. It doesn't feel, it feels very balanced, I, I would say. It doesn't feel as overpowered as um, some of the Incarnans that we've seen. But it's definitely not underpowered. It's a very, very good weapon. Let's go to Circulus. These 
We're going to start without any kind of uh, conditionals, so it's going to be pretty weak against these Drag Masters that they love to start you with. I hate these guys. They steal my weapon over and over. There, second time. And they spawn an army of dogs. Let's get these dogs down, then we'll start the... Uh... Alrighty. Start here. I'll cast my three to get me some armor. That will probably not be the last time I cast it because it does not stay up anymore. So the siphon mode is really strong too. Like as you can see, these enemies are are just dying from the siphon mode. Gonna move over to that first set of life supports where we're gonna be fighting at. And uh, probably pull back a little bit to kill some of these guys. The non incarnate mode is also like not that not that bad. It's not as good as the incarnate, of course. But it's it's also like not you don't feel bad when you're in the non incarnate. Some incarnate weapons have a really shitty not incarnate mode. And it feels bad to be in it, but this one it doesn't. Remember to hold your shot, too. If you've killed all the enemies in front of you with the Incarnate, don't be like me and just shoot it into the air <laughs> like I've done a few times here. Uh, try to hold your shot. That way you can save your Incarnate bar. But it doesn't really take that long to fill it back up. You know, and I'm, I'm not using the 50% uh, quicker uh, charge. You could... You could use that, too. I use the punch-through one. Um, just because the punch-through one can sometimes give you, like, the, almost the same effect, especially if enemies are kind of, like, lined up. Um, getting a little bit of lag that I usually don't get. I don't know if that's... They changed a few things um, with the settings and how lighting works. And this weapon's effects might be a little bit weird, too. Ah, yeah, it was one shot. Yeah, he, he died from the heat proc. <laughs> one shot to kill an Acolyte. Oh, my goodness. This is starter steel path. You know, this is only like 180. Uh, but that's that's still pretty good. <laughs> Kill a 180 uh, acolyte in one shot. I don't. I didn't even aim that good. I might have got a headshot on him though. I think I might have got a headshot. The, uh, the wiki right now is not full of information. It's, it has very, like, lackluster information just because the weapon just came out. In fact, last night it didn't have any information on it. Um, oh, let me, hit, let me hit a few life supports here. Um, so as more information comes out, 
Um, things may change. I did a lot of testing myself, and I think this is the proper uh, way to go with it. But who who knows if someone finds out that, you know, if you run in a circle, stand on one leg, and, you know, pat yourself on the head three times, it'll produce an impact proc. And that might change the build up. But everything I tested, this is going to be how you build it out. Um, there are some options, though, on the evolutions that could be different depending on your play style. The very last evolution with that charge shot being able to do like 250, 250 crit chance, crit damage, that'd be really good for like one shot builds. Like maybe Archon Hunts, things like that. I got some Thraxes. Of course, as soon as I go to shoot, they go invulnerable. Got kicked out of Operator before I could finish that guy. Where is he? Yeah, with the Anaros rework, uh, Anaros has gone full cat lady. He is now a cat lady. He spawns cats. They go and they lick the enemy. I didn't think that's how the rework was going to go, but that's what we got now. I like cats, so uh, I'm not complaining too much. Just a little bit weird. I used to think Korra was the cat lady. I went to press Anaros' four yesterday and like three cats came out of them. And I was like, oh my goodness. Step aside, Cora. There's a new crazy cat lady in town. Let's head over to the next set of uh, life sports. Uh, where are they? Down this hallway? I think so. It's kind of cool that you cast that while moving. Um, I will n probably need to switch to using Archon Shards though in my videos. Because you used to double your armor and it doesn't do that anymore. It gives you armor based on, I believe it's your health. And so I might switch to using health arc uh, Archon Shards. They won't change the, like, they won't give strength to a, a ranged weapon, of course. You know, health shards. But they will just give me a little bit more armor. I don't like to do um, Steel Path without, like, at least 2,000 armor. And uh, right now, with that 620 down there, I think I'm at, like, 1,600, which is not good enough in my eyes for a uh, health armor build. He has a lot of health in RO, so he can kind of, like, get away a little bit with it. But I don't, I don't like having less than 2,000 uh, armor on a health and armor build. So I'll probably use some blue Archon Charges for positive health to increase my armor on my three now. Of course... Um, I've said it in other videos, and I'll say it through the second talk through too. But uh, in Whispers content, you don't want to use Viral. Viral is bad in Whispers content. Enemies are resistant, so they take less damage from, and they're actually immune to Viral procs. So in Whispers content, you don't want to use Viral. You want to switch to Corrosive. Corrosive is the best general element against Whispers enemies. There are specific elements um, against... Whispers. There's corrosive and radiation. Radiation for murmur, corrosive for uh, constructs or whatever they're called. But in general, against both of them, corrosive works the best as a general element. I think I switched out of my incarnate mode for like no reason. Let me go back into it here. Ooh, one shot. I don't even think I had any stack uh, scope stacks on. No, I didn't. I just gained two scope stacks right there. One shot without even my scope stacks up. They're very powerful. 
Very powerful uh, weapon on that charge shot. We're at 10 minutes. I'll kill these Thraxes, and then we'll see where we're at for kills. You're usually expecting the uh, Lua Conjunction to be a little bit less kills than the, the Kuva Survival. Just because you spend a little bit more time uh, fighting Thraxes. Well, you spend time fighting Thraxes where Kuva Survival, you don't have any Thraxes. I don't really care too much about life support right now, because we're going to leave it uh, right after this. He stole my weapon, of course. Get some headshots, Salt. What are you doing? All right. So we have Thraxis down. We're at 500 kills, which is still above average. Um... For Lua Conjunction. And on Lua Conjunction, you do expect to get a little bit less kills because enemies are bigger and you spend more time fighting larger enemies like Thraxes. Oh my goodness, get up here, Salt. So we'll go to um, Extraction and we'll go over the build one more time. I really like this weapon, though. and It's, it's cool that it's an arm cannon. There's, there's not too many arm cannons in the game. Okie dokie. So the Onos, it is a secondary, like, forearm gun that will turn into an arm cannon for the Incarnate Mode. So it has three different, well, I guess technically four if you want to talk about the radial of the charge shot, but it has three different main damaging modes. It has its main non-Incarnate Mode. It has its energy siphon mode where it's like siphoning the energy in the air or something. I don't know. It does some kind of siphon that will do damage in a short range in front of it. The range will start out very wide and then it will, be, will become pinpoint. Um, and at that point, it will discharge this like giant uh, sniper rifle cannon-esque kind of thing. And that will also do radial damage. So that, that's all of the, the different damage sources that this uh, weapon does. So something to know is that on the primary mode, you only have puncture. Remember, these, these other two elements I've added on the weapon. So the primary mode only starts with puncture. The energy siphon mode only starts with radiation. And the sniper mode only starts with heat. And so that's going to be important because for us to maintain Cascadia Flare, we actually have to put heat on the weapon. Because the, the sniper mode, it's too slow to actually maintain Flare. Flare will eventually fall off. Um, if you're, you don't have heat on the weapon. And so by putting heat on the weapon, we get it on our siphon and we get it on our regular fire too. So super easy to maintain ca Cascadia Flare as long as you have a heat mod on the weapon. Okay, let's get to the uh, mods. Galvanized Diffusion for multi-shot. Galvanized Crosshairs for headshot. And there's a little bit of a conditional where you get more... Uh, or Galvanized Crosshairs for crit chance. And there's a conditional where you get uh, more crit chance... Um, the more you get headshot kills. Everything, all of these modes can trigger uh, headshot kills, except for the radial of the sniper mode, obviously. But even the, the energy siphon part of it will produce uh, headshot kills. You just have to aim appropriately. Prime Pistol Gambit for crit chance. 
prime target cracker for crit damage. Going back to the prime pistol gamut here, there's another one that people use a lot. Critical. Go to Creeping Bullseye. I would not use Creeping Bullseye. So this weapon already is slow. And on slow weapons, this is only a, a minus 20% fire rate. Mo on most weapons, this doesn't really feel like it does anything. Like you, you, don't, you can kind of ignore that negative fire rate. But on weapons that are already slow, even a 20% decrease to fire rate really hurts it. And the charge of that big shot is also based on your fire rate. And so the slower you have your fire rate, the slower it is to actually reach that, uh, that big shot at the end. So I would not recommend Creeping Bullseye. I would put on Pistol Gambit or Primed Pistol Gambit if you had it. Um, lethal Torrent for Fire Rate and Multi-Shot. Both good. Multi-Shot's great. And Fire Rate helps you with exactly what I just said. And then in the last three slots, we have our three elements. Just remember the game reads it from left to right. So it's going to read cold, and then it's going to read toxic, and then it's going to make viral out of those two. So we have the 60-60 cold, the 60-60 toxic, and then the next one we have here is heat. Um, now with heat, I have primed heated charge. If you don't have primed heated charge, you should use the 60-60. The 90, like the regular heated charge, is not good enough. It's like the worst of both worlds, where it has no status that the 60-60 does, and it has way less damage that the primed heated charge does. So it's just too much of an in-between regular heated charge. So you either use primed heated charge or you use the 60-60 heat. Doesn't matter. I like primed heated because it increase my, increases my heat weighting a little bit higher. Ruinous extension. In my testing, ruinous extension does work. It increases it by a pretty significant amount, the uh, size of the energy siphon mode. So, of course, this is not going to do anything to the actual... Uh, like sniper mode, or it's not going to do anything to um, the primary fire mode, but the energy siphon mode will become a lot longer. Well, I mean, it says it right here, eight meters. It'll become eight meters longer. <laughs> so Runix Extension is amazing there, and there's also not, like, many other options in the Exilus slot that, like, are great with this weapon. And so, uh, yeah, I think the Runix Extension is the best. I tried Lethal Momentum with projectile speed. It didn't seem to really affect anything except for the primaries, like, little explosive balls that it shoots out and they kind of go fast already i don't feel like it, you really need lethal momentum on this weapon so i think ruinix extension does a lot more for you cascadia flare is going to be our best option for the arcane it gives us the big 480 percent flat damage normally we put uh deadhead or merciless in this slot um, especially if a weapon can't keep up on heat heat procs. And normally this weapon could not keep up on heat procs because that charge mode is not quick enough to really keep those heat procs pumping. But because we put heat on the weapon, all of its fire modes can produce heat procs, and Cascadia Flare is super easy to keep up. So that's the mods for the Onos. I'm going to go over the evolutions one more time. So first evolution is nothing. It's just you've unlocked it. Second evolution is an easy pick. It's going to be fiery, and it's because it increases the, uh, the quickness of that charge up. So it lets you get that big um, sniper shot off quicker, and it also increases like the ticks of your energy siphon mode. Weapon recoil. The weapon doesn't really need we a negative weapon recoil, so I don't really care about that. And projectile speed is nice. I mean, it helps the primary mode a little bit, but I, again, the projectiles kind of move fast already. I don't think you really need this. I think the, the plus 25 fire rate is a lot better. Third evolution, we ha are going to be going with reload speed. So if you look at all of them here, increased magazine capacity only affects the non-incarnate. 10% uh, chance to replenish 10 ammo only affects the non-incarnate. And reload speed would normally only affect the non-incarnate, but it also increases the time it, so any any kind of reload speed increases the, um, or decreases, I should say, decreases the time it takes to go into incarnate form. So it lets you go, go to incarnate quicker. So that's why we use rapid reinforcement because we're, most of this weapon is in the incarnate form. Like you, you do have to shoot to get headshots, but you're mostly in the incarnate form. So that's why we're not really taking these two. At least this one lets, lets us get into incarnate quicker. Uh, fourth evolution. There's two good options here. I'm going to go with this one. This is the on kill. So anytime you kill with anything, you get plus 2.5 punch through for 20 seconds. The energy siphon mode has an innate five punch through. So that obviously doesn't need any more punch through the, uh, charged like sniper mode only has a one innate punch through. So lethal Lance actually benefits the charge mode pretty decently, but 
what I actually use it for mostly is the um, primary mode. So the primary mode, it's going to let you punch through targets and hey, you might be able to hit multiple heads. And so you might be able to get more incarnate charge. And that's kind of like the my reasoning for using Lethal Lance. Now, the other one here is just a straight up, you get to incarnate quicker. Your headshots build 50% more incarnate. So they're both extremely good. And like, you know, if you were looking at the gameplay and you were like, eh, he's gotten, getting to incarnate kind of slow, like maybe you kind of want to use this one instead. And that, that would be completely fine. They're both really good. I like Lethal Lance because it it affects other things than just the primary mode. So that's why I pick that, but they're both super good. This third option, don't don't pick this. It's negative crit chance and plus 20 status. It's just bad. It's a it, This is a hybrid weapon. On hybrid weapons, you know, you build for status and crit chance, but you're usually leaning a bit more in the crit chance uh, side of things. And this is like exactly opposite of that. So don't pick this one. In the fifth evolution slot, there are two good options here. And one kind of weird option. So the weird option is a sequential skull buster. So on consecutive headshots. So when you hit a headshot, this doesn't trigger. When you hit the second headshot, this triggers. And you're going to get plus 30% headshot damage from then on. And it will stack up to four times. But as soon as you miss a headshot, it falls off to zero again. And you have to stack it back up. And because of that, it's not very consistent. I mean... You know, if you think you're Eagle Eyes Malone and you can, like, get a headshot every single shot, this is probably your best option. But I am definitely not Eagle Eyes Malone, and this was pretty bad in my testing. The other two, I'm going to go for the very boring pick of 100% flat damage. So on a punch-through hit, you get plus 10% damage for 10 seconds, and it stacks up to 10 times. Everything, because of uh, the... Uh, the fourth one we picked, but even if you didn't pick this one, that this this would still work. But because we picked that fourth pick, every part of the uh, weapon produces punch through basically, and so we're always going to have that hundred percent damage up time. It's boring, but it works all the time. Uh, that's pretty much my reasoning. Now the other one that's really good is Devastation Cascade, hitting enemies in incarnate form, specifically the energy siphon, increases the critical chance and critical damage of the fully charged blast by 5%. So basically, you're in incarnate, you go to shoot, it shoots out that energy siphon, anything you hit with that energy siphon is going to give you those little 5% ticks. And it's going to keep adding up, keep adding up, keep adding up. And then by the time you go to shoot it off, whatever it's at, I can stack up to 250%, um, 50 times, so 250%. Um, by the time you go to shoot it off, bam, you go to shoot that the big uh, sniper shot. It gets 250% crit damage, 250% crit chance, does a shitload of damage, and then it goes back down to zero. And then, you know, the next time you go to, to charge it up, it does, does that again. So I feel like this has a lot of one-shot potential, like maybe for like Archon killing builds, this could be really good. But this only affects the charge shot. It doesn't actually affect the, um, it doesn't affect the primary at all. And... It doesn't affect the energy uh, siphon like kind of mode of it either. The energy siphon mode is what triggers and what actually like starts getting it to stack, but it doesn't actually affect the damage of that. The only thing it affects in damage is the uh, charge shot, which I wasn't using this, and you saw me one shotting acolytes. So even without this, I mean, this is really strong, but this could have like a really good potential for for certain bosses maybe to like one shot them. But I'm going to go with the super boring 100% flat damage just because it always works. It works on all modes. There's no conditionals, basically. It says that there's conditionals, but we're always going to be getting punched through. So it pretty much is just up all the time. It's a boring pick, but that is the pick I'm going for because I am a boring dude. Alrighty, and that's the uh, evolutions. That's the mods for the Onos. I think that was pretty much it. I hope you guys liked the video. If you liked it, Give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed. And I hope you have guys have a good day. Bye.